A while back, we covered a series of studies that indicated that we can stabilize plaque in our arteries when we consume omega-3 fats, like those in fish oil, krill oil, fatty fish, algae. Beyond that, these studies suggested that omega-3s reduce the inflammation in the plaque, one of the primary ways that plaque in our arteries stabilizes. In fact, we want more stable plaque because it's less likely to rupture, like soft plaque, and damage downstream blood vessels. And part of the stability is based on the inflammation occurring within the plaque itself. I mean, the literal immune cells found mixed in with the cholesterol streaks underneath the lining of cells that make up the initial area of the blood vessel. These immune cells invade between that initial lining of cells in the blood vessel and attempt to clear out the stuck cholesterol. However, as they become overburdened with cholesterol, they can become pro-inflammatory as they recruit more immune cells to the region to help. It's a self-perpetuating cycle with a lot of intricacies that we won't go over now. Just know that unstable, dangerous plaque can be unstable because it's bloated with immune cells. So, knowing that, and knowing that omega-3 fats help stabilize the plaque, I was curious, how does it do that? Luckily, there are a lot of studies looking at omega-3s in cardiovascular disease, with many being mechanistic to offer some resolution to that question. There's this uh, one study that I found where the researchers applied a variety of polyunsaturated fats, like omega-3 fats, to the initial lining of cells that I told you about, the ones that the immune cells are trying to get past to get to the stuck cholesterol. That lining of cells are called endothelial cells, and something intriguing happens when these cells are exposed to omega-3 fats. These uh, endothelial cells express or produce different proteins, much like any other cell, but the one of these classes of proteins is called adhesion molecules. These adhesion molecules are then placed in the membrane of the cell facing the bloodstream, and it's here that binding proteins on the immune cells will lock onto the adhesion molecules, allowing the immune cell a grip on the surface of the cell. Think of it like grabbing onto a stick sticking out with a gnarled end as you slip through a slide. It'll stop you from continuing your slide. From there, the immune cell anchored on the blood side can invade past the endothelial cell to find itself into the plaque. So, that in mind, this is the only datum that I'll show you because it's the most poignant. We're looking at VCAM, an adhesion protein produced and trafficked to the surface of the endothelial cells. The higher the bars, the more VCAM adhesion protein is present. Then we have four fats applied to the endothelial cells. We're concerned with DHA and EPA there. They are our omega-3s. The black bar is a pro-inflammatory state without any fats added. So if the bars drop from that one, that's a good thing. It means that there's less adhesion protein. The lighter the bars in shade, the more fat has been added. Clearly, we see a dose response reduction in VCAM1 when omega 3s are present, especially with DHA, known as docosahexaenoic acid. So, this offers evidence that in a strong pro inflammatory environment like that seen in unstable plaque, omega 3s can reduce the adhesion proteins that allow immune cells to invade into the plaque. Pretty neat, isn't it? That's one way. But in the studies that we initially went over, there was an efflux or an egress of immune cells out of the plaque. So how was that accomplished? By the way, I'm going to link my initial analysis going over those human studies. But if you're interested in a deeper dive, including more on the types of omega-3s and even plaque reversal from my full analysis, check out the Physiotic Insiders version. It comes with an article, uh, more details, and you're welcome to discuss it with me in live sessions that I do for the insiders. Plus, all these perks that you get too. The link to access, everything is in the description. I'll see you over there. In terms of immune cell efflux or removing immune cells already present, there's a protein called CCR7 that is quite important to convince immune cells to leave the plaque. Essentially, it's produced as a receptor, and that receptor gets placed in the membrane of the cell. That receptor then binds a few different molecules that are secreted from nearby cells. When these molecules make contact with the macrophages at the CCR7 receptor, they essentially guide it like a plane being guided by runway lights to the lymphatic system where the macrophages 
can then leave the blood vessel. Honestly, I'm skipping over so much detail that I think is absolutely wickedly cool, but I don't want to concentrate too much on all that right now. I'll probably create a separate content to get some of these uh, fascinating mechanisms covered as well. They're among cellular behaviors that I've never heard of before and deserve their own attention. The main point here is that the greater expression of CCR7 and the production of these guiding molecules by lymphatic cells guides the macrophages out of the blood vessel, thereby clearing immune cells. There are other ways that macrophages can be convinced to leave, like a protein called Netrin-1, but we don't need to get into all those intricacies to know that it's possible. Unfortunately, while we have pretty good evidence that omega-3 fats encourage the remodeling of plaque, and we also have evidence that omega-3s discourage the production of adhesion proteins responsible for the immune invasion into the plaque, there is little mechanistic evidence on omega-3s and how they might encourage this efflux or egress of immune cells. So something that uh, future research will hopefully look into. So yeah, just another nugget of cool data on how omega-3s help us avoid worsening plaque forming cardiovascular disease. And if you haven't egressed out of the video already and you're interested in more on this very topic, invade into my deep dive on the topic right here. I'll see, see what I did there. I used the technical words from the video to